Hi. Welcome to Armor Core 6. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so dumb. The game made from the beloved from software. This game is stupid. However, unlike my other videos. Go, 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 go. You better not, you better not, you better not, you better not. Go! How? This game is so bad! This isn't a story dictating my difficult journey to completion through blood, sweat, I'm dead, and a lot of tears. What is the point of this game? This is the story of how I accidentally discovered the most overpowered build in the game and used it to complete every single mission in Armor Core 6. Enjoy. Yes! And you did. Yes! Our story begins August 24th, 6.18 p.m., the day Armor Core 6 came out and the time it finished downloading on my computer. I start the game naming my character after one of my new Discord members, and also because machines produce smoke. Ha 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 ha. Once ejected out of outer space and into the planet Rubicon, we figure out how to operate our mecha. Oh my god, I don't know what I did, but I'm going fast as fuck, boys! Kill our first few enemies, and then face the peerless task of obtaining a green card. Because if you couldn't tell, we are the mecha version of an immigrant. Now to obtain this green card, we first have to slaughter other mechas on this foreign planet, giving us bodies to scan for identification just like Christopher Columbus. We eventually end up finding the AC unit Raven to use as our Elias, and get caught by Border Patrol with our fake ID. I have one more remaining- Ah! What the fuck? Fortunately for us- Take this! Nyar, nyar. The HC helicopter isn't bulletproof, and besides a bit of resistance, I'm dead. Mostly because half the screen is text and symbols, I learned how to press. This is, this is absurdly hard. Take this. The dodge button. Yes! We did it! Once that was done, we became official mercenaries for the company All Mind. Not at all a suspicious name. Learned all about part building, color coded my mecha to look like a Buzz Lightyear fleshlight and then did various missions for random authoritarian companies to build up our reputation on Rubicon. The missions weren't anything hard to deal with. I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god. Mostly consisting of destroying targets, destroying robots, destroying objects, destroying moving objects, destroying moving target object robots, and a ton of other menial tasks. The rising action of these missions being the mini-boss you get to fight, and the climax being at the end of the chapter, which contains the final boss. After easily managing my way through chapter one, I was ready for the final mission of this chapter. GG's! Little did I know that this would be the mission that would start the legendary build known as the talk. But before that, we have to go through trials, guys I tried, and tribulations, and I'm dead. Baltus, as the game calls him, 
I call him Ballsack, is a pretty difficult early game fight. Not only was my present build dealing no damage to the boss's shield, is this shield like vulnerable to something else? But unless I was an employee on Black Friday, I was incapable of dodging all the 3,000 missiles he'd casually send my direction. And don't even get me started on second phase. He has a second phase, what the fuck? Because that was basically an insta-kill. I love this game. With the current build, I was incapable of making it past more than 25% of his health bar. That's the closest we've gotten to killing him. The main issue being, more missiles, yay! The missiles, I love missiles! And my lacking damage. To fix this, I exited the mission and into the part shop where I can buy all sorts of supplements. Oh, these are not the supplements I was talking about, but might as well make a purchase on Gamersubs.gg while using the code TOWERINGPANTS for 10% off all your Gamersubs order. Please. This led me to the purchase of two grenade launcher hands and the tall legs, which allowed me to do 15 times more damage and gave my AC 6,200 more health points. So to put it lightly, I tanked all the damage and made Baltus my little bitch. GG the tank wins! <laughs> it was at this point in the recording I realized I was onto something. Yes! Tank mode wins again. <laughs> After concluding the first chapter, we easily get through the second chapter, only facing a bit of difficulty against the Smart Cleaner and the Sea Spider. No, I died. Both of them posing a big problem for our AC due to not doing enough damage, slowly but surely, and not having enough health points. I literally, I can't get hit, I will die. Totally not because our AC is the slowest AC in the game, causing us to be less accurate and tank all the hits. That's definitely not the reason. We don't need speed, we need health and damage. Yes, health and damage. One way we can do this is by completing the arena missions we unlock after every chapter. Giving us OS chips, which we can spend on damage mitigation and increase firepower. But in order to get more of these, yes, one HP, <laughs> we need to head to chapter three. If I get hit, I die. Come on, just one more shot. Come on, one more shot. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> by the skin of our teeth, and by that I mean not even close. Where I easily take down all of my opponents, tank all the damage, by having more health than them. I'm built different. Upgrade my AC's parts to give me 4,320. Yes, sir. Even more health. And test out weapons with, do I have two detonating bazookas now? more blast radius to hopefully make up for my lack of maneuverability. Because to be quite candid with you, I'm fat as fuck. And that became very apparent against the sea spider. No, it missed! So the choices we have now are to either increase our mobility or become a fat diabetic with bazookas. I think you know which one I chose. Once we make it to the end of chapter three, yeah, boys, I take part in the most epic boss battle in this entire game, at least visually. Since game-wise, I'm trying to aim this huge electric cannon on my back at this 700 meter long worm, waiting for it to get blasted, so then I can get the opportunity to do damage, and then repeat that process two more times. I'm going. Yeah! The tank wins again! No more appendage for you. Mine is bigger.
now on to chapter four, we do the same old missions we've been doing already, including one of my favorite missions in the entire game. In this mission, you have to carefully navigate yourself through a laser hellhole and destroy the laser at the end. But because we are, I have enough to tank through this, the talk. Yes! <laughs> we can just casually let ourselves fall all the way down to the bottom without having to worry about the laser. I love this build. Along with that mission, Chapter 4 also has two of the most difficult missions in the entire game. One of them is eliminating all the red gun mercenaries, which sounds exactly like every other mission we've been doing. However, what takes place is eight minutes of bullet hell madness. One of those minutes is without the use of artilleries. Who the hell could beat this? Since the mission is so long that our ammunition depletes, and I'm dead, and we have to rely on our AC's punching ability, no, for the last few enemies. Yes, I have one HP. The other hard mission in chapter four is against the last boss, Cell 240. Now, if it wasn't quite obvious by the gameplay, this boss is really fast and does a shit ton of damage. It moves so fast, in fact, that our bazookas miss 90% of the shots. See, how, like, how do I keep missing? It's kind of stupid. Aimed at its direction. This guy's body type is not meant for fucking grenades. And any other weapon tends to either do no damage or miss the target entirely. All except one, that is. Which is the Stun Needle Launcher. This weapon not only does extreme amounts of damage, but it also tracks extremely well. I don't even know what's going on on the screen half the time, and yet it still manages to Let's hit go. the Shoot target. Him. Yes! Come, yes! I did it! <laughs> With the tank build! Now in Chapter 5, we start off as a non-tonk build because of some story bullshit, but quickly revert back to our original form, where I can finish the build off with another stun needle launcher. Two is always better than one. Unlike the other chapters, this chapter consists of mostly mini boss battles against other ACs. These fights were easy enough with two stun needle launchers auto-tracking to the enemy's location. And of course, let's not forget, our ever-increasing health bar. Once we manage our way to the final boss, we have to make a decision between two possible endings. For this playthrough, we chose to go against the crazy coral lady in our head, who's been speaking to us throughout this entire playthrough about how good the coral reef is on Rubicon. Airy. That's her name. Aerie is the single worst opponent against our talk build, simply because she's invested all her stats into hyperspeed, more than Cell 240 ever could. However, with our stun needle launcher's inhuman level of accuracy and over 18,000 health points, we sit here and mash buttons for five minutes, tanking all the damage and surviving with over 6,000 health points. I don't wanna die. Yes! We did it! I think there's definitely a phase two. Now to finish up the rest of Armor Core 6, we need to complete New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus. However, before we start the second playthrough, we go to gamersubs.gg to purchase waifu cups, gamer fuel, and merchandise using the code TOWERINGPANTS for 10% off your order.
Now starting off with New Game Plus, everything is the exact same. We complete all the missions we did before. Go! Taking care of Baltus from Chapter 1 with over 10,000 health points and three repair kits to spare. GG, Baltus! Took care of the Sea Spider from Chapter 2 with over 7,000 health points to spare. GG, Sea Spider! Beat the Ice Worm from Chapter 3 again. GG, Ice Worm! Annihilated Cell 240 with 11,000 health points and one repair kit. I am the living embodiment of the perfect AC unit. And overall, absolutely demolished every enemy we came in contact with. And once we got back to Chapter 5, we made the alternate decision to work with Eri to save the Coral Reef instead of fighting her like we did before. Yes! Prompting us to have extra missions to complete, more mini bosses to kill, yes! and the final boss, our handler. Wow. Walter White. At this point in the playthrough, I've managed to upgrade my AC's OS tuning to the max, allowing it to do the maximum amount of damage along with the maximum amount of tauntness. Basically what I'm trying to say is this was the easiest fight in the game. Seriously. And GG! Look at how much health I had left. Now with Rubicon's Coral Reef saved, we can start our second New Game Plus, which is going to be a bit different than the last two playthroughs. Yes, a lot of the missions were the exact same thing we've done twice now. GG! But some of them have an alternate mission in them, and some of them are completely brand new. The new ones had a few new mini-bosses that were simple enough to handle with two stun needle launchers, over 18,000 health, and a fully maxed out AC. Once we make our way through chapter one, and GG, <laughs> two, and GG boys, three, GG boys, four, easy, and five, GG, we end up getting betrayed by All Mind, which was very suspicious surprising name. and leads us to facing the true final boss in the game all mind and although this ac moves just as fast as airy and spawns in with a full lineup of groomsmen i definitively have the most overpowered build in the game thank you GG Armor Core 6! Oh! We 100% completed all the missions. Oh!